when we say banking as a service here at BBVA in the US, the key here is it's a white label experience. So we're providing not only read functionality, but also write functionality. Welcome to the Tearsheet Podcast. I'm Zach Miller. This month, we're focused on banking as a service, defining it, understanding it, trying it on to see where it leads. The term BAAS is batted around a lot in the industry as it eludes the near-term evolution of the bank's role in the financial system. But like a lot of emerging technologies, there isn't consensus on what it means. It definitely involves some type of cloud-hosted banking services delivered to third-party applications via connections called APIs. Global Bank, BBVA, has made a big bet on the opening up of banking tech infrastructure, and in the U.S., it's focused on ramping adoption of its banking-as-a-service platform. Today on the podcast, we talk with Brent Baker, the head of growth and operations at BBVA's Open Platform, which means he's in charge of bringing new customers and maintaining risk and control. We focus primarily on his work with the firm's banking as a service offering and how it fits into BBVA's global strategy of being the bank of billions of people. Brent Baker is my guest today on the Tearsheet Podcast. I'm Brent Baker, and my role with the Open Platform team today is head of growth and operations. Uh, those are two kind of broad categories for us. So in growth, we're really looking on customer acquisition, uh, awareness, and sales. And on the operations side, we're really fo we're focusing on um, risk and control, but also just the means by which we're onboarding clients onto our platform. And through that, it really is kind of how we're working with our second line partners at the bank. So can we take a step back and, and describe what the open platform offering is? Sure, that's great. So the open platform offering is uh, here in the US, and I think I wanna be clear on that one. The you know, open platform itself is a subset of the larger open banking initiative that the bank is leading. Um, I'll touch on that just a bit. For you know, the global bank, there's a open banking is a key part of its strategy, um, but it understands that each strategy needs to align with the markets in which it's operating. So we're, uh, open banking reaches is active in Spain, obviously with the you know headquarters in Madrid, uh, Mexico with uh, Ben Comer, and then you know here in the U.S. is our open platform uh, working with Compass. What's unique about the U.S. is we're really focused on our banking as a service solution, and I'm sure we'll spend some more time drawing that distinction. But it is the you know, what we look at it as the uh, white label solution for third parties to take advantage of core banking capabilities, as opposed to maybe in other traditional open banking settings, it's really providing access to existing customer data. That's an interesting point. And as, as we're starting to explore more and more about banking as a service, it's definitely a term that not everyone agrees on its meaning, right? Right. No, and it, it, and what are the different sides? I guess you, you started to allude to that in your last answer, but um, the way I understand it, so, you know, there's obviously as banking goes to the cloud and, and it becomes API-ified or whatever, um, a non-bank, you know, your PFM app or something like that, you can pull down um, some of BBVA's um, functionality. Um, other, I, I've seen other models where it's literally just like recreating a bank, you know, in the cloud. Um, right. so, so how do you guys think, how do you guys think about open banking? Well, I'll focus primarily on banking as a service because that's really at the center. Yeah, of sorry, banking. I misspoke, yeah. And that's fine, but I can also touch on open banking as well. Um, but when we say banking as a service here at BBVA in the US, the key here is it's a white label experience. So we're providing not only read functionality, but also write functionality. Uh, we're allowing a client of ours to launch their application or their service, incorporate core banking capabilities that they don't typically have access to, and the means by which they're accessing those are a set of well-designed APIs. That is what makes up Open Platform. We don't view this as yet another channel for bank-branded products. So you see a lot of banks today are rolling out developer platforms. In fact, that's pretty much table stakes mm -hmm. with every major institution. But they're often creating access to existing branded services. So you can get access to the Wells Fargo ACH uh, solution via their API or you can originate a Capital One 360 savings account. All great services for a specific market. Who we're going after are those clients who want to control the experience end to end, but take advantage of the same services. Interesting, and, and, and from my perspective, BBVA was, was really early in sort of embracing uh, open banking in general and, and, and banking as a service in the US. Um, what, what, 
I guess, can you take us a little bit behind the, uh, behind the curtain? Like what, what was the impetus at, at the bank in general to sort of to move into this area so quickly? Yeah, I think uh, a lot of, you know, I think fortuitous events kind of led to it. Um, so when BBVA acquired Simple in 2014, the, a part, as a part of that acquisition, they needed to transfer Simple off of their current core provider and onto the Compass Core. Um, and so in order to do that, they needed to build a platform that gave Simple access to the bank's functionality you know, whether that's identity verification or various treasury management solutions or account origination or card issuance, but Simple needed to control the end user experience as they had up to that point. So uh, the platform was launched, Simple migrated over, it was a success. And then uh, the bank said, okay, well, we're launching two neo banks are of our own. So let's take what was built for Simple and allow these neo banks, uh, one being Aslo, which is focusing on non-consumer businesses. Uh, the second is Denison, which is really a more of a consumer focus, but with more global reach. Let's launch these two banks on the same platform. So we updated the version, took, you know, applied the learnings from the Simple migration. And now at the end of 2017, you have three operational banks operating on this platform. The decision then from the bank was, okay, now we have this suite of assets. We have three operational neobanks. Now let's see if there's a place for this in the, you know, in the market. Let's get outside of the, outside of BBVA. And so we, you know, put a product in market, uh, the latter part of Q1 in 2018. Uh, we went through a pretty extensive beta period where we brought a, you know, created a beta cohort, had external parties consuming our services, giving us feedback, and not only feedback on the product itself, but the onboarding experience and uh, the pricing structure. And we're doing some elasticity testing. And so we put a lot into that, which really led to our launch of the banking as a service platform in the end of Q3 of last year. So we've really, we see ourselves in market for not quite six months. And how do you, how do you think those first six months have, uh, have gone for you guys? Yeah, I think it's been good. I think what we have learned is that our offering is unique. There aren't many in the, uh, in the U.S. market like it. And um, we've brought on some clients that are eager to scale with us. Um, so, you know, obviously they like the fact that they're getting the support from the team that we have in place today. I touched on the client integration team, but it really is a close partnership that we have with them. We don't see ourselves as a vendor. I think that's sometimes that we're even educating our partners. We're not a vendor in this scenario mm -hmm. to you. We are a, you know, we're providing core banking capabilities. You're operating within the bank's framework, and this is a true partnership. And with that comes a really close working relationship. So I think they've appreciated that. And I think they've appreciated their ability to get up and running in a relatively short time frame. So it's never as fast as anyone would like, but if you think about how the infrastructure is set up in the U.S. today, it happens relatively quickly. So I don't know if you can name any of those clients by name, but um, can you at least describe sort of who, who, who those clients kind of are and, and why they're coming to BBVA? Yeah, I think the one that you know, we're the most public about is Digit. Um, mm -hmm. Digit has traditionally had their closed loop savings program that really, I think they've done a great job of you know, we're building a uh, active and vibrant customer base draws, helping that customer reach a, a savings goal. Um, what they're doing with, uh, with Open Platform is they're building that out. This scenario is specific to paying down credit card debt. And so what they're doing is they're taking advantage of Open Platform's payment capabilities, uh, specifically uh, ACH, but also our bill payment capabilities. So they're really allowing a customer to set a savings target of, I want to save an additional, I'm going to make this up $50 to pay down my credit card. Uh, they're using our ACH service then to transfer the funds into a pooled account that we provided for them. And then once they hit their target, they're using our bill pay capabilities to then push those funds to the credit card provider. Interesting. And you said under your penumbra of, of responsibilities, you, you own growth. How, how are you going out and meeting more companies like Digit that are interested in sort of expanding? Yeah, I think it's something where, you know, we, awareness and storytelling is a big emphasis of ours right now. I mean, it's kind of that stage where we're at, where we were in market, now we're talking, we're understanding how to position ourselves and we're, you know, covering a lot of channels. You know, we're doing more with media and press. Uh, we actually have a media budget that we're working against. And it's also really leveraging our existing partnerships to help tell that story. Um, and so given, I mean, this is really early innings for you guys, but what are your like, sort of big goals thinking about uh, 2019? Is it just onboarding more and more customers, a new functionality you guys rolling out? Like what is, are there things you can share with us? 
Yeah, um, happy to. I mean, I think the big goal is, you know, we demonstrated in 2018 that there was market fit, uh, that we knew the pricing targets that would play in the market, and that we knew we could get this to market. That was a big first step. Now that we're in market, it's focused on scalability. So how can we continue to onboard clients in a, you know, scalable, timely manner while still offering uh, support to the client, but also doing so in a controlled manner? I mean, I think it's really important for us in financial services to, as we're rolling out new products like this, we're building strong partnerships with our second line partners within the bank and ensuring that we're growing and growing at the appropriate rate, but doing so in coordination with the bank. So we're not just out there growing as quickly as we can for the sake of growth. We're growing, I think, a smart, controlled way. So that's a big part of the emphasis. Now, in addition to that, it's continuing to invest in the product, um, really under getting feedback from the market on what capabilities they're wanting us to provide to them and then finding ways that we can do that in a manner that allows them to control the user experience. Um, and then as I touched on earlier as well, you know, just storytelling, getting the, getting the story out of the market. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And, and are, are there certain other providers, um, I call it, certainly not vendors, partners that you bump into, um, I guess in the marketplace, like who do you see yourselves like kind of competing against? Yeah, you know, I think there, there's a, there are some providers out there um, that do a nice job. Uh, you know, you see, we, and we kind of look at them in a variety of contexts. Um, you have the processors, you know, those that have built uh, solid platforms that are kind of, uh, you know, sitting in between the bank. So they actually typically have bank or bank partnerships mm -hmm. uh, and the end client themselves. Uh, you see that and you see other mid-sized institutions also getting into the space because they recognize the opportunity. And I think they've done a nice job building out platforms like that. Uh, Cross River's done a great job. I think they've really built a lot of awareness around what they're doing. Um, Green Dot's also doing a really nice job in that uh, regard. Um, but when we look at institutions with global reach or the global reach of something like BBVA, we feel like we've really established ourselves as uh, a leader in that space. So one other trend that we've seen and we started to pick up on and cover on Tearsheet is um, challenger banks who have gone and built sort of full stack technology and um, you know, building a retail brand and now all of a sudden they're starting to, you know, AWS it up and, and start selling their services to other banks. Do you, how do you see that trend playing out? Um, they seem to me very different businesses. Um, it just, I don't know, it's something we picked up on. I'm curious to see your perspective on it. Yeah, I, I think it's interesting. I think we're seeing more of that in Europe right now. Um, and it makes sense as a logical extension of their business. Like they understand how to operate as a digital business. They understand the capabilities that they needed to consume to get their bank to the to that point um, to really you know, uh, achieve the market traction that they have. And now they want to look at this as another way to broaden their reach. Uh, so it makes a lot of sense. Um, not seeing it as much in the US, but I think it's something that we're keeping a close eye on. And do you see yourselves ever working as like so a full blown technology provider um, for a um, a licensed bank? Potentially, it's not a market that we actively go after. Uh, so I'm not going to say we would never do something like that. Um, but we haven't really seen you know a lot of the ca core capabilities that we're offering. Banks are already offering today. Mm -hmm. um, so it would need to be, I guess, a bank that is looking to take on maybe some unique payment capabilities that we have that they're not currently supporting, but that's a pretty saturated market as well. So it's not one that we're actively pursuing. Um, and it's not one that's actually knocking on our door, actively knocking on our door. Um, so that's probably how I would answer that one. Um, you know, I think the other thing is we're not really in the business of creating our own channel conflict as well. So <laughs> makes sense. we want to enable a bank to then start competing against them. And, and so how, how does BBVA's uh, banking as a service distinguish itself in the market? Yeah, I think it's, it's two part. One, it's the robust suite of services. So we really don't feel like we're a niche provider or we're only offering, you know, payment capabilities, but we're really offering a wide range of banking solutions. So it's, it's a one-stop shop. Uh, obviously, we touched on the white label capabilities, but where we really feel like we're setting ourselves apart in the space is the emphasis around the developer experience. And we spent a lot of time thinking about uh, developer onboarding, our API documentation, the way our APIs are designed. Um, and we, you know, 
and think about really just guides and resources. Um, but we kind of set out a mission from the beginning, like let's not design the open platform like a bank would. And I don't want to offend anybody with that, but we didn't want to create an ACH API that I could ask for account number and routing number and the same information every time you wanted to do an ACH debit or credit. We wanted to create a unified payment solution that uh, really minimized the number of parameters and really made it easy for uh, for our clients to scale. I mean, I think, especially here in Silicon Valley, you know, there's a set of expectations around Stripes as a well-designed API, Twilio has a well-designed API. Why shouldn't a bank also have a well-designed API? And I think like, that's really been a core to our mission from the beginning. And so I guess as a follow-on question to that, um, so developer relations is, is important for the uptake of this of this service and, and, and to grow. Um, and it, that sounds to me like it's, it's a new function within the bank. Um, how did you go around like staffing that, bringing the right talent in? Did you have people within the bank that you sort of retooled? Like, can you talk about how sort of you built that functionality? It's a mix. We we try to balance the team with you know key members from the bank because we feel like that institutional knowledge is important. But we also wanted to source talent outside of the bank because I think we also want to again we're not designed to operate as a bank. Um, and you know the developer resource center or the developer support is a big part of what we're doing and really you know a lot of that is when we're onboarding clients or talking to prospective clients or even supporting existing clients you know we have a, uh, a number of channels where they can reach out to us we use slack quite a bit we manage all of our tickets uh, they have a ticket filing system with us we're touching you know eh, but it's not all hands-off we're also meeting with them once a week and hearing their needs and understanding their feedback and that's not just problems that we're solving you know, or day-to-day -day issues, but also enhancements and features and how our two businesses can grow together. Um, I, we have time for one last question, and I'm kind of curious at your group, um, I guess how, how integrated it is into, the, into BBVA as a whole. Um, I guess that's just a way for us to visualize sort of the, the breadth or the depth of the, of the initiative within the bank. Specific to banking as a service, uh, yeah. again, we don't see ourselves as rolling into an existing channel. We don't see ourselves as working, you know, with treasury management or against treasury management for that uh, matter. Um, BBVA has a large corporate initiative to be the bank of billions. And one of the ways they see that, you know, to uh, achieve that reach and that scale are through solutions like Open Platform that would allow them to enter markets into different ways by partnering with clients that are serving specific needs. So we feel like that's, um, how we're coordinating with the bank, but also helping the bank meet uh, its key objectives. Brent, thank you for joining us on the Tearsheet Podcast today. Thank you.